It's Ireland, a senior writer and instructional designer with Mighty. If you are interested in creating better assessments and articulate rise, you're in the right place. Assessments are an important part of creating meaningful learning experiences. As learning creators, we use assessments in three primary ways. First, to evaluate what learners know before and after learning. Second, to prompt learners to self-evaluate. And third, to provide application opportunities where learners can apply what they've learned. Now, there are a lot of different types of assessments, and while there can be a lot of value in cumulative end-of-module quizzes, that's not really what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm primarily going to be talking about knowledge checks scattered throughout a learning experience. But before we dive into the nitty-gritty, I want to take a quick moment to cover some assessment best practices, because you can't write better knowledge checks without a strong foundation first. So, best practice number one, avoid questions that are too challenging. The idea isn't to trick the learner or make it unnecessarily difficult for them to get the question right. We call these gotcha questions. Sometimes a question or activity is rather difficult, so you might need to consider ways to help the learner without giving away the answer. So for example, in a multiple response question where the learner can select all that apply, you might use the navigational text to tell the learner exactly how many to select. So for example, select the three that apply. Okay. Best practice number two, avoid questions that are too easy. So while we don't want gotcha questions, we also don't want gimme answers. If the correct answer is too obvious, or if the learner could guess it without taking the module, consider what value that question really adds. Best practice number three, assess learning, not memorization. So the best questions and activities demonstrate how the learner is able to apply what they've learned to a new situation versus merely asking them to memorize and repeat back information. So for example, let's say you're teaching learners about SMART goals. Instead of just asking them to define SMART, provide them with three goals and ask them to select the one that is SMART. And better yet, you could ask them to create their own, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Best practice number four, make wrong answers clearly wrong. So for multiple choice questions, make sure incorrect answers are clearly incorrect. Now, that doesn't mean the answer should be obvious. Instead, it means that if the learner could make a case for the incorrect answer being correct, the assessment won't be an accurate picture of the learning, and it can frustrate the learner, make them lose trust. It's just not a great experience. So make sure those incorrect answers are incorrect. Now, I know what you might be thinking. What about situations where there is ambiguity? What about including questions that have, you know, good, better, best responses, responses that are better than others? That can be okay. And it leads me to best practice number five, let scenarios play out. So for scenario-based questions, we actually recommend having good, better, best answers such that no answer is outright incorrect because that can sometimes make it a little too easy. This leads to a more interesting, realistic scenario by including responses like that. Use the feedback mechanisms to play out each answer so the learner can actually see for themselves what makes each answer good, better, and best. So if they pick the good answer, it should lead to a less favorable outcome than the best one. Make sense? Good. That said, if you're including good, better, best type responses on a question that isn't a full scenario, make sure it's very clear that you're looking for the best response so learners know that some answers may be technically correct or acceptable, but they aren't ideal. It can be as simple as saying, select the best response. And if you can't play out the scenario for whatever reason, include feedback that fully elucidates why some responses are more desirable than others. We want them to learn, right? So don't leave them guessing on why the technically correct answer they chose wasn't the best one. In six, our final best practice, consider the impact of revisions. So this best practice isn't about the knowledge checks themselves, but it's about you and your process. When revising a learning experience, make sure to consider how revisions impact question and answers. So for example, if you removed some content, be sure to remove the knowledge check associated with it. Overall, we generally recommend that knowledge checks be challenging, engaging, realistic, right? They should mimic learners' real-life context as much as possible. 
and they should provide opportunities to apply, not just regurgitate information. <sighs> I know that was a lot, but hopefully I haven't lost you yet because we're just getting to the good part. So articulate rise has a number of native components you can use to assess learner knowledge. Multiple choice, multiple response, matching, fill in the blank, true or false. And these are great options, but you're here because you're an innovator and you want to do more. So let's talk about that. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned the three ways we typically use knowledge checks, one of which being self-assessment. Now, that can be a little tricky in RISE because there isn't a native component that allows for a fill-in field like that. But with Mighty, you have easy access to a reflection block that does just that. It allows learners the space to self-assess. So how does that translate into better assessments? Reflection opportunities provide learners with the space to make personal connections and draw on their own experiences, which enhances understanding. In short, it makes the learning feel more relevant, relatable. It helps it stick. Reflection also promotes critical thinking by challenging learners to think outside the course. They're using their own knowledge to craft unique responses, as opposed to simply choosing from a bank of provided options, like in a multiple choice or multiple response. But that's not all. The Mighty Reflection Block also flexes for different needs. It can be used for short answer questions, surveys, I mean, you name it. And remember the SMART goal example earlier? So instead of having them choose the SMART goal from a bank of options in a multiple choice, or even in combination with a question like that, you could have learners write their own goals in the reflection field. And even better, this block has the capacity to work with an LMS, so leaders can review learner responses and use them for coaching, additional conversations, etc. That means the learning doesn't have to end when they click close course. And you can include just one question or you can stack multiple, so it's super versatile. We love it, I think you'll love it. And speaking of things I love, let's turn our attention to another way you can use Mighty to create really great knowledge checks the hotspot question. The best knowledge checks are engaging. Remember, they, they aren't too easy, they go beyond memorization, and the hotspot question is a great way to do this in your course. But what are the learning benefits of using the hotspot question? Well, there's immediate feedback for the learner. As they engage with the question and select what they think is correct, feedback pops up in real time to let them know how they're doing. Super clear, which is what we like. It also brings the content to life visually. It allows learners to more actively engage with the knowledge check. In my opinion, it's much more active than a multiple choice or multiple response. Learners get to discover the answers on their own versus selecting from a preset bank. They get to be the explorers and find the answers themselves. The hotspot question block can also allow for better representation of real world context. And I think this is super important. If you're teaching a course on internet security, for example, you can show a phishing email and ask the learner to actually interact with that email to select the signs of phishing. Or if you're crafting a course on housekeeping for a hospitality client, you could show a cleaned room and ask what's out of place. I mean, the opportunities are endless. And if you're still not sold, the hotspot question also encourages recall and retrieval and is a great way to implement what might be called desirable difficulties. Because remember, the best knowledge checks engage and challenge learners, assessing their learning, not just their memorization of key terms. So basically what I'm saying is, with Mighty, your assessment capabilities are expanded. You and your learners have access to greater variety. Learners can get bored with the same question over and over, same types of questions over and over. And so can us writers and designers. So by adding these two tools to your toolbox, you're equipped with additional ways to challenge, engage, and assess learners so you can create more well-rounded learning experiences that better assess learners' understanding. And that's a mighty good thing. We're so excited for you to play around with these components. And our team loves questions and suggestions, so reach out if you have them. But otherwise, we'll see you next time. <laughs>